into a small room full of books and out into the world. Welcome to Gladstone's library. It's as impressive inside as out. Number one, you have a perfect Victorian time capsule in so many parts of this library. Number two, it's like an Oxford or Cambridge quadrangle has landed in North Wales. <laughs> This is a very living memorial to a very dead Prime Minister. It's unique, you can actually stay here as well as read here. And now it's been given over three quarters of a million from the National Heritage Memorial Fund. So new generations of readers and writers can open up their printed worlds. Awful lot of Prime Ministers, if you're lucky and any good, you end up in Westminster Abbey. But this is Gladstone's monument and it's a living thing people shuffle in and out of. Absolutely. And that's what he had as a, as a vision, I think. This was his legacy, that he wanted this to be a place where what had given him life and energy and enriched his life would, would be shared with others. So he wheelbarrowed down to Gladstone's library over 20,000 uh, books. A prime minister wheelbarrowing a load of books. Yes. Now, £750,000 worth of heritage grants could either buy you two and a third copies of the first edition of The Great Gatsby, or it'll help mend the lead on the grade one listed roof here. Something the eminently practical William Ewart Gladstone, there he is, you can't miss him, would have entirely approved of. If you can't keep the rain out, it's game over anyway, basically, isn't it? Totally, you know? and we have, um, unfortunately, with this kind of uh, strange weather we've had over the last sort of 12 months or so, we have developed a number of leaks that have never been there before, so this money is very timely in that respect. They reckon Gladstone actually read over 40,000 books in his life. There's an awful lot on the Council of Trent on the bookshelves here, and absolutely no Katie Price, but political history lurks round every corner. We're off to a place I wouldn't normally take you, but bear in mind, for decades, Gladstone and Disraeli were bitter prime ministerial rivals. So where in Gladstone's library did Disraeli end up? That's right, the loo. Way to hold a historical grudge. I think Disraeli enjoys being in the, the toilet in Gladstone's. <laughs> Have you asked him? Daily. Well, at least Disraeli can stay dry when they've got the new roof on. Rob Shelley, ITV News, in Harden. Let's hope so.